In this video, we're going to discuss the kinetics of quenching, right? And we're going to discuss also something which is shown right here, which is a Stern-Volner plot, and we can determine what can be found or determined from it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so what is a Stern-Volmer plot? And then we'll go into this based on our understanding of it. A Stern-Volmer plot is a ratio of this thing right here, which we'll talk about in one minute, as a function of the concentration of the quencher. Now, what is a quencher and what is quenching? So a quencher is something that basically stops a quantum event. Okay, in this case, we're talking about fluorescence. So if something quenches fluorescence, it means it stops something from fluorescing. Okay, it might absorb some energy um, that's required to cause fluorescence. It, it does something like that and it just stops fluorescence. Okay, like when you think of quenching in terms of ter uh, thirst, it stops your thirst. Okay, your thirst is quenched. It means, just means in this case, it stops the fluorescence. Okay, and we're looking here at the concentration of the quencher. Now, when you plot this whole thing versus the concentration of the quencher, it actually yields a straight line. Okay, and like we said earlier in other videos, PCHEM is the pathetic attempt to force everything into a y equals mx plus b, a straight line. So what is this thing on the y-axis? Let's break it down. So this, this Greek symbol, this is our quantum yield of fluorescence. And what does the zero mean? So this numerator is the, it's the fluorescence quantum yield in the absence of a quencher, okay? That's what the zero means, there's no quencher. And that has the expression, the rate constant of the fluorescence times the radiative lifetime of that particular species, all right? And that will give you the fluorescence quantum yield in the absence of the quencher, all right? Now the bottom here, the denominator, this is the fluorescence quantum yield with the quencher. And its expression over here is a little bit more complicated. It's equal to the rate constant of fluorescence divided by, first of all, this term, one over the radiative lifetime of the species, plus the rate constant for the quenching times the concentration of the quencher. And notice there is a difference between the case of F and the case of Q. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the ratio of without the quencher and with the quencher, the two quantum yields. So we're gonna take this whole expression, kf times this tau naught, and divide by this whole thing. Now you'll notice when you do that, I won't show you the algebraic derivation, but notice that you're gonna have a kf here divided by a kf. So you'll notice in this following expression down here, there's no kf term, but the kq, this term does survive, okay? And when you, when you do this quotient and you simplify it as much as possible, what you'll find is that the ratio of the fluorescence quantum yield without the quencher to the fluorescence yield with the quencher, this is gonna be equal to one plus this whole term right here, the rate constant of quenching times the radiative lifetime of the species times the concentration of the quencher. Now, for a given species that fluoresces, the radiative lifetime is a constant. This rate constant is obviously a constant, so we've got this concentration of the quencher, which is a variable here, times two constants. So if we know these values right here, we know this ratio, we have a y equals some number plus a number times the other variable. So this is actually not exactly in the form, but it's basically y equals m x plus b. Now our b, which is our y-intercept, is just one. So that's the nice thing about a stern volmer plot. It actually intersects the y-axis at, at uh, y equals one right here. And then it turns out that if you then plot this y, which is this ratio, versus, assuming x is your concentration of the quencher, the slope of this line, which some sources will denote capital K, that's actually equal to these two numbers that are multiplied in front of the Q, which are the, or the rate constant of the quenching times the radiative lifetime of the species. And so typically you would get a graph like this and they might say determine the Stern-Volmer constant. Now the Stern-Volmer constant is actually just the slope of the line, um, which is simply the K. But if you know what the radiative lifetime is the of the species is, which you can look up, you can actually then determine the rate constant for the quenching. Okay, And that's the main thing that you can actually determine from a Stern-Volmer plot.
Okay, we may actually do a, a practice problem like of this in the next video. So hopefully this actually gave you some intuition on what a stern volmer plot is, what the equation is that produces this line, and what it can tell you. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.